Today's scripture reading is taken from 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. Thank you, Christ, our Lord, who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once blasphemer and a prosecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. Here is his trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy to that in me, the worst of sinners. Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now go to the eternal, King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Myrtle. I want to thank you all for giving me this time today and always to uh, speak in front of all you guys. I promise not to go too long. Uh, we have communion today, and I know football is back in season two, so not to worry. Uh, not to worry. I heard, once heard about uh, this one speaker that got up and said he wasn't going to speak for too long, and 20 minutes came and went, 40 minutes came and went, 60 minutes came and went, and this person's still up there speaking. Well, the person that had introduced this speaker had heard enough, and he, he had taken this gavel, this, this object that he'd had, and he tossed it at the speaker, but he, it went right by the speaker and hit a lady right in the front row. And she shakes her head and said, hit me again, I can still hear him. So hopefully I won't be that bad today. How many of you guys are already tired today? Rick's smiling. You're smiling awful wide back there. Now I don't mean tired in the sense that maybe you stayed up too late or maybe you didn't sleep all that well. But how many of you feel like your very spirit is drained? How many of you have gotten to the point in your life where it feels as though your very soul has been sucked out of you? You ever felt that way? It's that kind of feeling that comes after different things that happen in your life. Maybe it's the effects of sin in our world or your life or it's just all the things that you've experienced have just built up so much that you just don't know how you're going to continue. You ever feel that way? You ever sit back and reflect on all you've seen and all you've been through and you think, wow, I don't know how I made it and I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to continue at this rate. Yet you do. You wake up to a new day and you start all over again. What else comes again? Then sin comes again. You fall short of who you want to be. And you get down on yourself. And pretty soon you feel lost. Are you feeling lost today? Are you feeling like something's missing? A life that seems like a repeating cycle of mistake after mistake after mistake. Just when you think you've learned from your past mistakes, you make some more. Psalm 26, 9 says, Do not take away my soul along with sinners. 
How's your soul doing? Paul was checking up on young Timothy's soul when he penned our scripture today. And Timothy was one of his closest companions, and he'd been sent to the church in Ephesus, which is located near our modern-day western shores of Turkey. And he was sent to counter the false teachings that had arisen there. And he starts off in our scripture today in verse 12. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength. That he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. How strong do you feel today? Do you feel physically strong? I know when I was younger than I am now, I certainly felt more physically strong than I do now. And how about mentally strong? How mentally strong are you feeling at this moment? Sometimes as we age, we, we sure try to get more mentally strong because we almost have to. We have to become wiser to overcome that depleting physical strength that we have. In some senses, we get smarter. We sure hope to. What about some of those other times, those? Those bad days where you wake up on the wrong side of the bed or whatever it is, and you're just not feeling it that day. You're not mentally strong. And you're depressed and you're feeling low for no particular reason. Sometimes it's the weather and those rainy days, and we've certainly had a lot of those lately, where it's just gloomy out and your mood reflects the weather. It seems like our soul isn't as full as perhaps it once was or as full as it could be. Sometimes we tend to focus on the negatives in our life, don't we? the negatives around us, the negatives that we've caused ourselves. And the more we focus on those negatives or maybe the sins of our past, the more our soul feels drained. And when our soul feels drained, we start feeling like we're no good for anyone, let alone for any purpose that God has in mind for us. People can feel so guilt-ridden by their past that they think God could never forgive them. But consider Paul's past. He had ridiculed the teachings of Jesus, hunted down and murdered God's people before he came to faith in Christ. And God forgave Paul and used him for his kingdom, and boy did he ever. And if God can do that, if he can do that with Paul, surely he can forgive and use us. Verse 13, Paul says, Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy before, because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Let's not wait too long to open ourselves up to God. You know something that the devil loves? He loves statements like, Maybe later. I'll get to that eventually. Someday. Someday. The devil loves procrastination. He loves those phrases that we tell ourselves. Ah, someday I'm going to do that. Someday. Ecclesiastes 12, 6 through 7 says, Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well. And dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spear returns to God who gave it. Paul waited long enough until he had that day on his road. He'd done enough damage by then. And he certainly could have continued on that road, couldn't he? He had a lot of power, a lot of influence. He could have continued down that sinful past, path, yet he chose another. And he says in verse 14 here, The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Boy, that sounds good, doesn't it? 
Are you yearning for that something that's missing in your life? In Matthew 7, 7 it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. If you have never trusted Christ for your salvation, don't sit back. Don't wait for a better time to accept him. Now is the time. If you sit back and wait, it may never come. Commit it to God and seek His will immediately. Right now, today. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call on Him while He is near. Paul's boldness in Christ can be intimidating, can it? You ever felt intimidated by somebody else's faith in God? Or maybe their knowledge in the Bible's teachings. You ever been intimidated by somebody else's knowledge of the Bible? I sure have. We may always feel that we're inadequate. I feel it all the time. And we will have times of failure. However, if we remain confident that Christ will help our faith and love grow as our relationship with him deepens. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. How is your soul doing today? Remember the good news. The good news. In verse 15, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into our world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Jesus didn't just come to show us how to live better. He came to offer us salvation that leads to eternal life. The main definition of soul in the dictionary says the spiritual or immaterial part of the human being regarded as immortal. Your soul is immortal. Have you accepted Jesus' offer? of salvation. Your soul is immortal. What do you want to feed that soul? Knowing that that soul is around forever, what do you want to feed it? Do you want to fill your tank with some bad gasoline? You ever put bad gasoline in your vehicle? Didn't work out so well. Or do you want God to fill her up? Like our landmark outside of town here says, get her done. Well, we're saying to God, fill her up. Fill my soul up. The great Roman emperor Charlemagne in the tomb. Have you heard this story? When they first opened that tomb up, there he was, sitting on his throne still, crown on, head, on his head, scepter in, it, in his arms. And a Bible on his lap opened up, and his finger, the bones of his finger, were pointed to one particular scripture. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Paul wasn't afraid of his past. He wasn't afraid to share it or the things that he'd done. He knew his failures would give others hope. Your past failures can help you and others hope. Don't let your past drain your soul. Use that past to tell others what God has done for you. We're so afraid to let others know the mistakes we've made, thinking it's going to smear our image. But how important is it when we can communicate that to others? Communicate the gospel to others. You know, the rest of us sinners. Do you want others to see the importance of the gospel? Show them what Jesus Christ has done for you. You ever wonder why so many bad things happen? Why have so many bad things happened to you? God uses things 
He uses those bad things to show others what God can do for them too. What has God done for you? Use that. Tell others what God has done for you. Those others, they're sinners too. Has Christ been patient with you? Has he stayed with you when you've had doubt? When you've rebelled? Did, you, did he love you when he ignored, when we ignored his word? Did he still love you? His patience is without end for those who love him. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I'm overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near death. Are you overwhelmed with the troubles in your life? Are you concerned about your soul and where that soul is headed? Where is your soul going when you leave this earth? God is our refuge and strength, ever-present help in trouble, Scripture tells us. The Word of God tells us. Paul says in verse 16, But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Reflect back on those sins and hard times that have drained your soul. Don't be afraid to let others know what Christ has done for you. It's not going to just give them hope for their soul, but it's going to remind you what he has done for your soul. And how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Is your soul tank running low? Is your empty light starting to come on? Why not feed your soul with the nourishment that can only come through Jesus Christ? Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who rob him. And Paul says in verse 17, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. How is your soul today? If it says in Deuteronomy 4.29, If you seek the Lord your God. If. You don't have to, do you? God has given us that choice. If you seek the Lord your God, you will find him. If you seek him. You will find him if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul. If. Let's pray. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sin and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my Savior and follow him as Lord. From this day on, guide our life. Help us to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.